What is good, damn it? It is your boy Sventi coming at you for a second time today, people. If you did not see the video I put up earlier today, it was more or less a little hype video for Battlefield 3's Close Quarters DLC and Battlefield Premium, which is a new service. Uh, I give a little bit of information, but it's a pretty vague video. It's kind of just, like I said, it's a little hype video. So go check that out if you haven't. I might even post it as a video response to this video. Something like that. Maybe an annotation. I don't know. Description. Who knows? Just go check it out, damn it. <coughs> but anyways, people, this is a video in which I am going to talk about the Battlefield 3 patch notes the one that came out today july 4th wait jesus christ june 4th i'm losing it um the gameplay you're watching though is actually something pretty special to me it is the game in which i acquired my service star for the jet and my jet pilot mastery dog tags i think the jet proficiency dog tags so on and so forth and uh you know i kind of just give you guys a little bit of gameplay from this leading up to the point where i got all that stuff and then i bring you into a team death match game in which i got mvp which is you know it's like every other game for me nowadays since i'm a boss but I, I strongly recommend that you do one of two things you get some popcorn you get some pepsi you get comfortable and you chill because i'm gonna bring you guys through every single aspect of this patch i'm gonna read the whole thing to you so it might be a little bit of a long video but i'm gonna try to make it as fast as possible and second off if you have to pause the video go take a piss go take a shower whatever you gotta do to keep yourself in your seats for the next five to ten minutes not even not even Alright, so, basically, this is everything in the patch that came out today. First things first, improved VTOL fighter jet, which is the F-35, it improved the performance of it. Based on community feedback, we have improved the, the performance of the F-35 and back to car can with better match, to better match that of the SU-35, particularly when it comes to turning speed. So that's going to pretty much give you guys more control, more speed, more agility, so to say, with the F-35 jet. And kind of make it more competitive so you don't constantly get owned by the SU-35. Um, the vehicle-related changes are as follows. They tweak the F-35 handling, pretty much uh, everything that I just talked about first. Jet and helicopter ECM jammers should now deflect missiles more reliably when it is active. And you know, I think that's a good change because there was times where I really did bring into question using the ECM jammer because it just, if you look at how effective the flares are compared to the jammer, I was like, eh, this thing really isn't that great. So I'm glad that they kind of improved that. They fixed an issue where vehicles wouldn't spawn if their intended space was occupy, occupied by a deployable gadget. The vehicle will now spawn as intended and the gadget will be destroyed in the process. So if some idiot tries to spawn or place a gadget where your vehicles are so sp supposed to spawn so they don't spawn, the shit's still going to spawn in now and it's going to destroy their equipment so they can't do any stupid shit like that. They fixed AA missiles not doing damage to vehicles moving at very high speeds. They reduced the direct damage from unguided javelins to require better side hits for a one hit disable. This was previously too forgiving and easy to accomplish. Really, uh, I agree with that. I think that's definitely a good change. They removed the direct damage from aircraft launched guided missiles. Players will need to have laser designated targets for full effectiveness. That's kind of interesting. Adjusted the helicopter rockets to their original pre-patch damage value against armored vehicles. This is a reduction, a revert of a knock-on effect that was introduced accidentally. So they accidentally added damage to the helicopter rockets. Now they're taking that damage back and putting it back to where it originally was. They fixed the U.S. tank guided shell during the reverse, doing the reverse damage values when guided and unguided. Hmm. Adjusted the M224 mortar damage against vehicles. Some tweaks and adjustments in a previous update accidentally increased its, effect as, its effectiveness greater than intended. You know, I think that's that's an alright thing, but the mortars really aren't that OP'd in my opinion. I don't think they're OP'd at all. Especially because you got retards using them half the time that you can just go take dog tags from. Or you just pull out the mortars and take them out instantly anyways, but... 
The next one is increase the range on the AA gun so they can reach vehicles hovering at maximum height and select maps. I like that. I like that. Replace the VDV buggy on Golf of Omen in the Baxacar Can map pack with the DPV buggy for both teams at the city flag. Fix the bug where some vehicle unlocks were still enabled after the player left the vehicle. That's actually interesting. So say I had everything unlocked for the vehicle and I got out and you got in, those vehicle unlocks would still be in there. I wasn't even aware of that, so that's pretty cool. Um, this next one is soldier and gadget related changes. Reduce the inaccuracy added when in suppression. There is still an enhanced suppression compared to the initial state in the game, but the effect is now less than it was in the last patch. Reduced input lag for gamepad, game pads slash joysticks on all platforms. Aiming as a soldier when using a gamepad or joystick should now be more responsive. Tweaked the deploy times on gadgets to be faster to deploy in high stress combat situations. Greatly improved the responsiveness when deploying a bipod when going prone and shortly after moving. The bipod deploy should no longer abort if the player deploys, deploys the bipod immediately after stopping, which is something that I think is going to benefit me personally because I use the bipod a lot. Uh, they fixed the bug where you couldn't deploy the mortar anywhere on Grand Bazaar. Another thing why I wasn't really too aware of, I didn't know that that was really an issue. I never had problems with it. I know that they made it so you can't really place it in your spawn anymore. Um, when changing the accessories of a weapon in the customized screen, the weapon previously selected in the deploy screen will now automatically be selected when entering the accessory screen. That's cool. Basically what that's saying is when you go into My Soldier and then Customize, and you're trying to customize your weapons, it's really hard to explain, but basically what would happen, say I would scroll over to the KH-2002, and I was original in the M14 or the M16. When I clicked on the KH2002, it bring me back to the M16. So I mean, that's not really a big deal at all, to be honest with you. But I guess it's just something to make the game more convenient for us in the customization menu. Um, increase the effectiveness of the aim assist at close range. Testing in close quarters proved our current assist to be inadequate in tight quarters. This is a global change and will improve the effectiveness of aim assist for all modes and maps. Aim assist over distance is still significantly less effective. This is console only as aim assist is not present on PC. If you can, if you prefer, you can also turn it off on console. So I imagine that's something they did solely for Close Quarters DLC. Um, pretty cool, but at the same time, I never really noticed that to be much of an issue. <clears throat> Players will now spawn on the radio beacon looking in the same direction as the beacon is facing. The beacon always faces in the direction the player is facing when it is planted. Previously, the beacon's direction had no impact on the player's spawn direction. I'm pretty sure that before, regardless of which direction you place the radio beacon facing, you would always spawn north, facing north. So I guess that, that's another minor thing, but it's really cool to see them really being that intricate in their patch and kind of you know, trying to make this game as enjoyable as possible. The spawn preview camera on the spawn beacon has been updated to better reflect the direction the player will be looking when he spawns. 40mm smoke now stays longer again. Pretty cool, smoke did go away pretty fast. It seems like you shot smoke and it'd be gone in a matter of, I don't know, 10 seconds. So, it's gonna be cool, it's gonna make smoke more effective, which I think is good because, you know, people that use smoke are the real team-oriented players that P T F. Oh! Tweak some tracers on sniper rounds to have better visibility at range. The tracers are smaller. Tweak the flashlight so it is less blinding at the edge of the screen. Interesting. And fix bug where you couldn't pick up your deployed gadgets after being revived. Hmm. So basically I'm guessing if you laid a spawn beacon, you got killed and revived, you wouldn't be able to pick that up. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Now, this is the last aspect, this is the weapons related changes. Fix the bug where heavy barrels and underslung shotguns could be overpowered. This is so called M26 dart issue. Holy shit, thank you lord, smack my dog, call me George. The M26 dart seems to be the new USAS-12. I see fucking dudes sitting there using nothing but that for entire games and it's so ridiculous when they will just drop me, one shot me from a pretty decent distance away while I put four or five shots into them and bring them down to fucking 2% health. <clears throat> 
Thank you, Dice. All semi-automatic sniper rifles now properly have shorter range when using a suppressor. The L96 now properly shoots where the iron sights are aimed. The position was previously offset, so they're making the L96 with iron sights more accurate. The SKS now has the proper damage values when using a suppressor. The damage was previously too low at close range. Hmm. I don't know if I really agree with that, but I got faith. I got faith. Slightly reduce the suppression effect of SKS rounds. Decrease the long range damage of the SKS to highlight its close to medium range roll. So basically people were using the SKS and just dropping dudes pretty quickly long range when the gun was mostly meant to use from medium to close range. So they're basically making that gun more realistic in its roll. Seems like the SAS really got, I don't want to say nerf, but it seems like that was the thing that was changed the most so far. Slightly decrease the foregrip aim accuracy penalty and the M4A1 to bring it in line with other guns. Which is something that is amazing. I noticed after they uh, nerfed the foregrip aimed accuracy for the M4A1, I didn't even use that gun anymore because I loved using the foregrip with it before the last patch, but it seemed like after it, it was just impossible to use half the time. Slightly increase the foregrip aimed accuracy penalty on the Scar H to bring it in line with other guns. So whereas the M4A1 was nerfed too much, the Scar H wasn't nerfed enough and they're bringing that in line as well. Reduced some of the vertical recoil and zoomed accuracy penalties added to the FAMAS in the previous update. The F2000 foregrip accuracy penalty reduced and recoil reduction re bonus increased. Interesting. AEK971 foregrip recoil reduction bonus increase and that goes the same for the SG553 and the FAMAS. They all have a foregrip recoil reduction bonus increase. Fix the M416's M26 with flechettes not having a name in the kill log. Hmm. Wasn't aware of that. Fixed so all clip based LMGs have extended mags as an available unlock, which is badass. I love the extended mags in the M249, so it's going to be cool that all the LMGs now have that. All semi automatic shotguns now fire at 220 rounds per minute. There was previously simply a small difference between them, whereas now they have different pellet, yeah, pellet counts instead of rates of fire. Interesting. Improve the recoil and accuracy of the M26 to match the 870. Not bad. I think the 870 should be a little bit more accurate, but that's still nothing major. Reduce the impact suppression has on shotguns. Shotguns are still affected by suppression, but it should no longer significantly impact their accuracy from the hip as it previously did. The 870's pump speed has been increased slightly from 0.55 seconds to 0.48 seconds. The empty reload time for the 870 has also been reduced slightly, so very, very minimal changes. Probably not really even going to be noticeable. They improve the accuracy of aimed shotguns when on the move. Mm, not bad, not bad. The Saiga's recoil has been reduced. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly what you want to do with that gun. Gun is pretty overpowered. It has been throughout the game. It's dating back to Bad Company too, as well. But like I said, I got faith. The M1014 now fires 10 projectiles. The other semi-auto shotguns have nine pellets, since the M1014 has a lower mag size and a slower reload, and now fires 10 pellets to give it some edge. So basically, the M1014 is getting balanced out to fall in line with the other shotguns. The USAS-12 now fires seven projectiles. <sighs> I don't know if that's more or less than it currently shoots, but hopefully it's uh, not more. I'll say that much. The MK-3A1 now fires eight projectiles. And the last part of this patch is that they fixed. So the weapons fire mode is saved between spawns. So if I go from fully automatic to semi-automatic and I die now it would be like I would respawn and I'd be back at fully automatic but they're switching it now so if I switch to semi-automatic and die my gun's still gonna be at semi-automatic so pretty good stuff it seems like they really targeted a couple of the guns in particular like the SKS the M1014 um, they really did a lot with a foregrip recoil, which is something that I'm pretty happy to see. They, uh, I think they did a pretty good job, you know. 
None of these things are really significant problems or issues within the game, and that really shows their dedication to the quote-unquote Battlefield community. Just knowing that they are going this in-depth and, like I said, being this intricate and changing these little things in the game and adding little tweaks here and there really, really makes me that much more comfortable and, you know, being a loyal customer to both DICE and EA. But anyways, people, that is going to wrap it up. I really hope you guys liked the video. Definitely know, let me know what you think in the comments below. I apologize for the length. We're pushing 15 and a half minutes, so I'm going to let you all head out. And until next time, it is your boy Sven D, and I'm out. Peace.